Okay, poor my. There we go. What do you think, Cecil? I think poor May looks great with her scarf on. Oh, hi. Hi, you're back. Now, we were in the middle of a story. Do you remember? The rats attacked the town. Do you remember that the people, they were too greedy to pay the strange man to get rid of the rats, and they got the Berlin cats instead, which was a disaster because the rats beat up the Berlin cats. What could the town do? The rats were taking over. Well, all the people, they gathered in the square, and some people were crying, and some people were holding their children tight. But it was a boy, a boy who said, Look, do you remember that strange man? He's still here. And they looked up on the hill, and on the hill was a swing park. And on the swing was the strange man, the Pied Piper. In the evening, they went up as a group. Up the hill, they opened the swing park gates. And the swings looked like a gallows there with him swinging on it. They gathered around him. He said nothing. The mayor came up and said, Oi, um, um, strange man. You said you could get rid of the rats. That's right, he said. I can get rid of the rats. Yeah, you can get rid of the rats for one piece of gold and one piece of... No, six pieces of gold and six pieces of silver. That is my price. Yeah, all right then. Six pieces of gold, six pieces of silver, but you've got to get rid of them all. I'll get rid of them all, said the strange man. Okay, it's a deal. And the mayor got his hand, spat in it, and shook the hand of the Pied Piper. Now, if you do that in the olden days, that means you've got a deal, and you cannot break a deal. Okay? Right. So the Pied Piper said, good. Um, I'll wait till tomorrow morning. All of you go back to your houses. Lock the doors, close the windows. You can look out of the windows if you like when the sun comes up. But please, don't do anything else. They went back and they had a very, very fitful night in the town. They could hear the rats squeaking behind the walls in their arrogance. They thought they had won. And the next day when the sun rose, they looked out of the windows. And there he was. The Pied Piper, he was in the middle of the square, looking up. And then he got a flute from his bag. He put the flute to his lips and he began to play. It was strange music, music that humans could not hear. But the rats could. And after a minute, rats began to poke their heads up with their little black eyes gleaming out of the drains, out of the gutters, out of the rubbish bins, from behind the walls, from under the floorboards, from the rafters in the roof. The rats looked up and they began to crawl, their nails clicking on the wood, crawl out of the houses, crawl into the town square. The rats came from all over the town, and soon the Pied Piper was surrounded by what looked like a moving brown carpet of rats. Then the Pied Piper changed the flute and began to play a different tune he played faster, and he played faster, and the rats suddenly stopped. They looked up, and their black eyes turned red. Their black eyes began to swirl, swirl about in their heads, and they got up on their hind legs, and they began to dance, scratching at the air. They began to dance together. The Pied Piper saw them dance. He turned, and they made a path for him as he skipped out of the square, still playing, still playing, 
and the rats began to follow him. Dancing, they followed him over to the wooden bridge, and they danced across the wooden bridge, their nails making drum beats. And across the wooden bridge they went, and the piper played, continued to play, and brought them up, up to the cliff edge where the waves are a hundred years old, and they hit the cliff, which is a hundred feet high. And the Pied Piper played on the edge of the cliff, and then he changed his tune again. This time it was more frantic. The rat stopped. One of them span around and ran to the edge of the cliff and dived off. And then all of the rats began to run after him and dived off the cliff. It was like a brown, furry waterfall of rats falling to the cliffs below. Now, below, there were sharp rocks, sharp as razors. And if you were there that day, you would not hear the music, but you'd hear the impact. <laughs> as the rats hit the rocks below. Well, I can tell you something. The seagulls had a great feast that day. Well, the Pied Piper then closed his flute. He put his flute back in his bag and he walked into the town. Everyone was there. They slapped him on the back. They shook his hand. What a good fellow you are. What a good fellow you are. And he came up to the mayor and he said, I have done what you've asked, mayor. And now I want my money. And the mayor said, what money? Well, the money you promised me. Money I promised me. I can't remember promising you anything. But you promised me six pieces of gold and six pieces of silver. Six pieces of gold? Six pieces of silver? What do you think we are, stupid? I didn't make a deal. I didn't make a promise. Well, the Pied Piper, he looked around. He looked around to the, all the mums and dads there and he said, you were there. You saw him. You saw him make a deal. But they grinned at him and they said, nah, we didn't see anything. Did you see anything? I didn't see anything. I didn't see any deal. But you saw it. They began to laugh at him. You've got rid of the rats now. We don't owe you nothing, said the mayor. Somebody came behind him and pushed him. Someone kicked him in the leg. Someone hit him in the face. They began to beat the Pied Piper and kick him. He fell to the ground. They laughed at him and kicked him again. He scrambled up. He got out with his bloodied face and he looked around and he said, you made a deal. <laughs> yeah, but you can't prove it, said the mayor. I'm going to take away something more precious to you than silver or gold. And the mayor shouted back, there's nothing more precious than silver and gold. And the whole town laughed as the beaten Pied Piper made his way back up the hill to the playground. He sat on a swing. He got out his pipe. He switched it again. And then he began to play. Again, it was music that no one could hear except children. And it happened in the school, first of all, one of the boys st stood up and he started to dance around the classroom. Miss said, oh, sit down, stop acting the maggot, sit down now. And then one of the girls stood up, she started to dance. Boys and girls got onto, onto the table, they started to dance. And when the teacher looked in their eyes, they saw that their eyes had turned red and they began to swirl and they began to run out into the corridor. Stop that, stay where you are, said the teacher. No, stay where everyone sit back in their places. But it was no good. The children were listening. The corridor filled with children as classrooms emptied and the children ran then, ran into the streets, into the square and started running, running up to the top of the hill. The teacher ran outside to the parents. Quick, the children are being taken. Quick, the children are being taken. But the parents knew because even the younger children 
The ones not at school, they ran out to join the others, while the children danced and played and laughed as they ran up the hill. Once they got to the top of the hill, the Pied Piper changed its tune again. He skipped and danced out of the playground, and the children followed him along the road. Now, there was one boy, one boy there who had a very, very bad leg. He had a crutch, and he said, please, wait for me, wait for me. He couldn't dance as quick as the other children. He couldn't run that quick. Please, wait for me. Don't leave me behind. Don't leave me behind. By this time, all of the parents knew what had happened. And they ran out of their houses. Come back, come back, Hans, Friedrich, Gretchen, come back. They ran after the children. But the children were quick, and the children had a head start. And the Pied Piper led them on, led them on, led them on to the old field, the ancient field, which had little hillocks in it. And he came up to the biggest hill. And when he was there, he stopped playing, and with his flute, he banged on the hill three times, and a big door in the hill opened. <laughs> Dust fell down. The piper stayed at the entrance. <laughs> he changed the tune again. And this time the children screamed with laughter. And one by one, some holding each other's hands, they danced into the hill and down, down, down that long road, that long corridor beyond the roots of trees down below the hill. Now that little boy with the crutch, he was the last one coming up. Please wait for me. Don't leave me behind. Don't leave me behind. The Pied Piper stopped. The Pied Piper waited for him. The Pied Piper said, stop. I'm sorry. You can't come with the others. I'm leaving you here to remind them of what they lost. Every day you'll remind them of what they lost. Never, ever break a deal. I'm sorry. The Pied Piper turned to the hill, went inside, whacked his flute, and the hill closed. <laughs> Just as all the parents got there and they dived onto the grass and they punched the grass, please bring our children back. One of them said, shh, shh, put your ears, put your ears to the ground. They put their ears to the ground and they could hear the children laughing and dancing under the hill. Now, that boy with the bad leg, he was now the only child in the town, and he was spoiled. People gave him everything he ever wanted, sweets, toys, everything, except for what he really wanted, which was somebody to play with. My dear friends, if you go to Germany now, you'll find that town. The town is called Hamlin. And when you go there, <coughs> the man will say, Willkommen to Hamlin. Come, we will show you the hill where the children disappeared. And just outside the town is that hill. And there's a sign there telling the story. And if you go to that hill, and if you put your ear to the ground, you can still hear the children laughing and dancing under the hill. My dear friends, that's the end of the story from Cecil. We have to learn a lesson from that story. Never break a deal, never break a promise, and always work together for the happiness of everyone. Cecil, say goodbye. Bye. Come back to see us in the Story Emporium Repair Shop. <laughs>